This is the new M1 Mac Mini, the base model. That means this has 256 gigs of storage and just eight gigs of RAM. That's right, just eight. And with a price tag of just $699, this could possibly be the best entry level slash pro level video editing machine ever. So in this video, we're gonna check out how the M1 Mac mini performs when editing HD footage. Why HD? So a lot of YouTubers like to throw 4K, 6K, or even 8K footage of the Mac mini to see how it performs. But I know a lot of viewers and a lot of people I know don't shoot in those formats. They don't shoot in those higher resolutions. So I feel like seeing a Mac mini actually edit in HD would do a bigger benefit than doing something as 8K or 6K might do. And usually I shoot in HD, so it's kind of something I wanted to see too. So that entire intro you just watched was shot on my Sony a6600 at 1920 by 1080 at 120 frames per second with the XAVC HD codec. And this footage is being shot with my Canon EOS R, which is 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second with C-Log and using the uh, H.264 format. So now let's bring both these codecs together on a timeline in Final Cut Pro using the M1 Mac Mini. The first thing you'll notice is that scrubbing is a breeze. No matter where I slide my position indicator, the Mac Mini does not miss a beat. But like I said, I shot in log, so let's add a bit of color correction. and everything seems to just work. Really, really nice. Now, another thing I love is motion graphics, and I have some pre-made ones that I purchased long time ago that I can just drag and drop in. And fortunately, they still work. But I will tell you, a lot of my plugins that I bought back when I was editing on my Intel-based Mac do not work. And this red T will remind us of that, or this pop-up when you boot Final Cut on your M1 machine. Now this plugin problem is kind of a bummer because I spent a lot of money on these plugins and most of them are now, they just, they're just trash. I can't use them. So if you're going to update to the M1 machines, just make sure that you know that your plugins for Final Cut likely won't work or you'll have to wait for an update. Now some websites show not compatible with M1 yet or they're working on updates. So that's refreshing, but who knows when they'll come out. And honestly, with so much money invested, I just wish they worked right away. Okay, I am now done with my edit and I allowed everything to render out, which didn't take much time. And now it's time to export. Let's set the timer and see how she does. What? Less than a minute, and this timeline is five minutes and 35 seconds. Let's go, M1! If you want to buy a great editing machine for your HD footage sub $800, $700, go ahead and buy one of the M1 machines because they absolutely devour that workflow. But I will say, if you purchased a lot of plugins like I have in the past, you won't be able to use most of them, if not any of them. So keep that in mind because you are losing all that cash you spent. Now, I sometimes do shoot in 4K, and if you want to see a video of how the editing works with the M1 Mac Mini with 4K footage using, again, two different codecs, let me know in the comments and let me know what you thought of this video. I thought it was pretty helpful because I shoot in HD again and you likely or might shoot in HD too. So it's nice to see the Mac Mini work on footage that you and I will actually be using it with. So if you like this video, please leave a like, please consider subscribing and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any more videos. But for now, I am Ken the Content Coach. Now go out and make something. I honestly just want to shoot 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 and edit more stuff because the mac mini it feels like i'm getting so much time back in my life from not waiting around for rendering and exporting and things like that so this machine such it's such a great machine i can't get over it but you know those plugins it hurts it does hurt
And one more thing I wanted to mention is that all that screen recording you saw was being done on the M1 Mac Mini using the QuickTime player, the QuickTime screen recorder. So not only was it processing and working on all that stuff in Final Cut, but it was also running QuickTime screen recorder in the background. And again, it's just a beast. Thank you.